These are essentially the Rolls Royce of Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons. They're called the Mobiped M6 HDs. These are very high quality and they offer a lot more than meets the eye when it comes to hardware. They also have a lot of software options and an app that you can download to customize them. But let's start off with the hardware first because there's a lot more here than meets the eye. For example, I'm just gonna put these things out here because you might be thinking, why are there face plates and buttons if you already have them? Well, there's a very specific reason for that. You can see that the D-pad on here is one of those modern dish-shaped versions. But if you want to, you can easily just pop that out and then grab a normal D-pad and put it on here. So why does it come with two face plates? Essentially, these have Hall Effect joysticks, so there won't be any drift. There's also a steel ring in here, so when you go around a circle, it's really smooth and you don't have friction. It has a modern joystick design with the grip texture and a bowl so you can just haul it around. And yes, the joysticks do click. But if you're someone who likes octagon shaped joysticks instead of this round part, you can switch that out and replace it with a plate that has an octagon shape. These plates are magnetized and on the top there's a little ridge here so you can just haul on that and it pops right off. Then you take your other plate with the octagon shape and you just put it right on, simple as that. I just switched both of these plates out and you can see that my joysticks are now customized. The cool thing about having plates that are easy to switch out like this is that you can get different colors from their website. You can see on the D-pad on the left hand side there's a little indentation. You can use that to pop this out. Oops. So for me personally, I'd rather use these circle shaped joystick holes and because I'm a retro gamer, I'd rather use this style D-pad. And you can see that all this just took me a few seconds to set up. These do have NFC support, so you can use these with Amiibos. They're very big and comfortable to hold. You can see in my hand here, my hand's pretty relaxed, right? And my fingers are resting in all the places that you'd want them to. And obviously, if you compare it to something small like a Joy-Con, which is a tiny little thing, I mean, when you put your fingers on this, you can see that my hand's like having to push in to hold it and it's not really relaxed. You can attach these on the top. The only thing about playing with controllers like this I always mention is that your hand can hit the trigger on the side so you gotta be careful about that. They're not just comfortable but they're pretty gorgeous as well. I particularly like this font design on the buttons. I just think that's really cool. The buttons on these are Amron micro switches, but they're also combined with a liquid silicone gel. So that means that you can get a lot more use out of them. They're rated to have a lifespan of up to 10 million presses. So these are very durable, long lasting. And if you like micro switches, then you'll love these. But keep in mind that because they're micro switches, they are very clicky like a mouse. And for those watching that are wondering about the triggers, yes, that means that the triggers are micro switches as well. It's just like a mouse click and it's pretty responsive. But the bumper buttons on these are a bit weird. You can see that I'm pushing on this right now and nothing is happening at all. That's because you have to go down and then click it. So there's a bit of give here before you click the actual button, which is a little strange. And I mean, when you're playing, you probably won't really think about it, but there is some movement there before it clicks. It has your standard buttons for a Nintendo Switch, like you'd imagine, but something that's different is on the bottom corners, you can see these gear icon buttons. These buttons are for setting up turbo, these macro buttons on the back, and you can also set up button sequences with these, but I'll show you how to do that later. Some other features that you can't actually see is that these have six axis gyro controls. There's also HD linear motors. So that basically means that these have ALPS dual axis linear motors. So when you're playing a game, the motors won't just rumble, they'll replicate what's going on in the game. So it gives you a more immersive feel. So the last thing I'll talk about with the hardware is obviously there's no centerpiece. You have to use these on your Nintendo Switch to charge them or you have to buy something else that charges these up. So that's something I don't like. I think if you buy a product like this, it should come with a cable that charges them. Also with the centerpiece, you can connect them and charge them at the same time. You can just relax and play it like this, but it still would be nice to have a centerpiece. You can hold it like a normal controller if you wanted to. But in saying that, I will say that Mobapad sent me these over for review and you can check out their website and I'll have a discount link down below where you can save some money. But you can see on their website, they actually 
actually do have an accessory that you can buy for this for like 20 bucks that does charge both of these at the same time, which is pretty handy, but it does come at an extra cost, obviously. And I was actually pretty surprised by their website because you can get extra accessories for these, like different color plates and some other accessories you should definitely check out on the site. And check this out, they even sent me over their carrying case, which is pretty solid and has their logo on it. But if I open it up, you can see that it has a screen protector for your Switch. The material inside is nice and soft. And there's 10 slots for your Nintendo Switch cartridges. And these fit in here so perfectly, just check this out. It's like, <laughs> no matter how you put these in, they just perfectly go in. But I will say that if you want to bring your Switch screen with you, you can't just put it in like this. It doesn't really fit you have to connect this to your Switch to put it in the case. There's also a release strap here, but if you like these Joy-Cons a lot and you wanna take them around with your Switch, this case is perfect for that. But like I said, use my discount code and you'll save a bit of money. And as of the making of this video, there's a sale on right now, so take advantage of that if you're interested. So yeah, obviously they offer a lot, but let's test this out with the Nintendo Switch and I'll show you all of its features. These are very comfortable when they're connected to the Switch. I will say that the left rail system is pretty solid, but on the right side the rails a little tiny bit loose but you will get some variance when you're dealing with a rail system so mario wonder if you press y you'll shoot a fireball if you hold y you'll still just shoot one fireball but if you hold the gear icon and hit y now you have turbo set up. So if you hold Y, you'll see that he'll keep shooting fireballs and there's multiple fireballs shooting. That's because there's a turbo set up. Another example is if you hold the gear icon and hit B, you can see that Mario will keep jumping and jumping and jumping. That's because turbo set up. And if you want automatic turbo, so you don't have to hold your thumb on a button, all you have to do is hold the gear icon and hit B again. And now when you hit B, you can see that this is auto turbo. So this will keep happening over and over and over until you cancel it. So again, if I hold the gear icon and hit Y a second time, now there's auto turbo on the fireball. So if I just tap it once, you'll see that Mario will just keep shooting and shooting and shooting. What's actually happening is the Y button is being pressed a whole bunch of times that you can see down here. It's being pressed a lot more than the frequency of these fireballs. This is just an example that the button will keep being pressed. If you were playing a shooter game, your gun would just not stop. It'd be like shooting an automatic gun. But I'll just hit Y to cancel that. But you can also change the speed of the turbo from low, medium, and high. So if I hold this gear icon and hit down, you'll see that I'm in the lowest setting because this light just blinked only once. So if I just go into auto turbo to make Mario jump again, you'll see that he's jumping pretty slow. It's not that fast, right? That's because we're in the low speed setting. So let's change this to medium speed. So if I hold the gear icon and hit up to shift up, this light just blinked twice, so if I jump with Mario again, you'll see that he's jumping a bit faster at medium speed. So think about if you're playing a shooter, you can control the speed of your gun. And now I'm going to change this from medium to high, so hold on the gear icon and shift up, and this just blinked three times, and when I jump, you can see that Mario is jumping a lot faster. Again, if you were in a shooter, your gun would shoot a lot faster. Another thing is if you have multiple turbos set up, you can use them all at the same time. So right now, jump is being used, but if I hit shoot a fireball again, you can see that he'll do both at the same time. And you can use your joystick while you're doing this. So I'm playing one-handed right now, essentially. If you want to cancel these turbo modes, all you have to do is set them up a third time and it'll clear it out. So if I hold on the gear icon and hit jump, Mario won't have turbo on his jump anymore. And if I hold the gear icon and hit Y for the third time, now there's no turbo on the fireball and I'm back to normal. There's two other things you can do with this gear icon button. One is you can set up a button sequence which you can initiate by hitting this button at the back. Another thing you can do is a button swap. So instead of using the button here on the front, you can just use this button instead. So let's start with the sequence. If I want Mario to jump and then spin, all I have to do is hold on the gear icon and you'll see that the light below lights up and then just jump and spin and then hit the back button. So the back button will now be that sequence. So all I have to do is hit that button at the back and Mario will jump and spin. So say I'm just running in the game and I want Mario to do that, I can just run, hit the back button, and he'll jump and spin. You can also loop that sequence, so if I double tap the back, you'll see that Mario will keep jumping and spinning. And if you want to clear the back button, it's the same thing, just hold on the gear icon when it lights up, just touch the back button, and then it's set up as nothing. So let's try a button swap. If I want my B button for jump to be this back button instead, it's a similar thing. All you do is hold on the gear icon and then just hit the jump button and then the back button. 
So it's kind of like setting up a sequence, but it essentially acts like a button swap and it does work really well. So if I hold on the back button, Mario will jump higher. And if I tap it, Mario will only jump a little tiny bit. So that means that it's a fully functional swappable button. So now I can just leave my thumb on the fireball button, which also makes you run faster. So this takes a lot of movement off my thumb and I can just use the back button. And if I want to use the fireball button, my thumb's already there. So people who are into quick precision controls like shooters and speedrunners might find that very helpful. You can also customize this controller using the MobaPad app. So I'll just open this up and show you. If I click on the MobaPad M6 HD and say I want to customize my right Joy-Con, I'll just tap on that and it'll scan it and find it. And you can do things like button tests, upgrade the firmware, or configuration management. There's also a gear icon where you can change your language settings and stuff. But let's just customize something. So if I go into configuration, and I want to edit my current configuration. All I have to do is just go in here and it gives you an option to change your dead zone or your curve settings on your stick. But let's try just remapping a button. So if I want to remap something, you know that B makes Mario jump and Y makes Mario shoot a fireball. So if I want to switch those, I'll just hit B and I'll remap that to Y and say okay. And then I'll go to Y and remap that to B and save that. So let's save this current configuration and I'll just name it BY. It added my BY configuration into a list here. So you can set up a bunch of configurations for different games and it gives you some different options down here such as add default configuration. There's also some official configurations that you can check out in here such as Breath of the Wild. You also have the option to edit it, rename it, delete, or even share it to people. But be careful because if you delete it, now your buttons are set up kind of weird. So I'll just go in and edit that. So that's why it might be helpful to set up a default configuration so that if you ever mess anything up, you can easily just set it back to the way it was. But none of this is very hard to do. I hope you found this helpful. Like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.